history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to Collins Station. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. KPRC. This is Channel 2 News Today. Good morning. This morning, breaking news out of Pasadena. A bold thief steals one of their patrol cars and then leads officers on a chase. We are live at the scene where that driver crashed out. Coronavirus is being called a global health emergency. What that means for us here in the United States. Plus, we'll hear from an American living in China on what it's like as there as the deadly virus continues to spread. And there's a slight chance of some rain this morning, but if you're hoping for some sunshine, Brit is tracking lots of sun for your weekend. Plus, we've got your Super Bowl party forecast. A little bit. A little bit. Slight. Well, you might see one sprinkle. Slight. And there's going to be that one person that gets some one sprinkle and says, it's rained on my car. Who's going to email you? So I just want to make sure that you're prepared in case you're the one person with the one sprinkle. I asked you slight, and we were doing, I got we were your doing back. like this, or is it like a yeah, million? Yeah, it's, it's like so small that little. I would not I really worry even about worry about it. No. Yeah, Eric, it's good Friday. Morning. Good morning. It is Friday. It That's is important. Friday. Traffic is doing well. Britta's got a good forecast for us. So life is good. Slight chance of traffic. Slight chance of traffic. <laughs> At 4.30 in the morning, uh, slight there's, chance. There's, there's always a 100% chance for traffic. There's a 100% chance for weather. It's just what kind of weather we're going to Exactly. Be. And we're in for sunshine this weekend. I mean, the weekend forecast looks phenomenal. It's going to be great. Yeah. Hope you're ready for it. We're almost there. Uh, this is a live look outside. We have a lot of clouds for today, but we'll have breaks of slight sunshine chance for late phenomenal. this afternoon. No, there's always a 100% <laughs> chance for phenomenal, at least how I look at life. Uh, so there's a live look at our tower camera. Again, our road Roads are dry. If you see a passing sprinkle this morning, it's not really going to be a big deal. Look at exact track radar. You can see a few of them working their way through Grimes County and Waller County over the last three or four hours. Right now, we're pretty much dry. The storm system that we've been watching all work week long is taking little move down to the south. So this is tracking from Brownsville into the Gulf, and that's going to stay south of us, letting us just deal with the cloud cover, which will slowly break apart as we go into the later half of this afternoon. Temperatures right now, upper 40s, low 50s. We're at 50 degrees at Bush Airport, 54 in Galveston, 48 degrees in Conroe. Our winds are still offshore. With that and the cloud cover, it's going to be a relatively cool day, but I think we'll get closer to 60 degrees compared to the last few days. So we'll go positive, say 60 degrees there. If you have Friday night date night plans, temperatures will generally be in the 50s with 54 degrees expected at 7 p.m. We'll talk about that awesome weekend coming up. Eric, over to you. All right, sounds good, Britta. Uh, time safe for traffic this morning. We are looking fine out there. Not many cars on the roads. And 
and we're moving along at post of speed. So hopefully you're getting a good start to your Friday morning. If you do have to head out, you've got no issues. 610 loop north, south, east, west looking fine right now, but we've got some changes coming up. Southwest freeway at Chimney Rock looks fine this weekend. It's going to be kind of a different story here in this part of Houston. The west loop at Westheimer looks fine right now. It's going to look a little different as we head into the weekend. We've got a total closure. The 610 west loop closed at 59. The southwest freeway 59 remains open, but you can't get through over 69, under 69, whichever. You can't get onto uh, 69 from the northbound lanes of the North Loop, and you can't take the exit to Westheimer. This is going to be all weekend long. My advice is to avoid this entire area around town. It is going to be kind of a nightmare out there. In the meantime, though, this morning, if you're headed out, like I said, no problems. We are moving along at posted speeds. Drive safely. Back to you. Eric Bray, thank you, sir. 4.33 now. And this morning, a man is in custody. After Pasadena police say he stole one of their cruisers and crashed it. This all happened on 288 right near Holmes Road, and that's where we find Channel 2's Vincent Cervelli this morning. So, Vincent, how are police able to get this man in custody? Tanaya, check this out. The suspect crashed the police cruiser in the grassy field behind me. Officers just towed away that cruiser. Officers say this is how it all started. The suspect was in custody in a police cruiser with his hands and cuffs behind his back. Then somehow he managed to get his hands over his head. Then he stole the cruiser he was in. Officers quickly followed him. Houston and Pasadena police officers eventually tracked him down. Then the suspect crashed the car in the, in the grassy field behind me. Officers set up a perimeter and eventually did capture the suspect. Authorities do say, however, that no one was injured during this chaotic situation. Reporting live in Houston, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Vincent. New this morning, Harris County deputies say they have two men in custody accused of drugging and sexually assaulting a 14-year-old girl. Now, deputies say they found that girl with the two men in their 20s right on the Northwest Freeway near Fry Road. Now, there is no word on that girl's condition this morning. Deputies did say they were originally called to that scene for a runaway call. 435, the World Health Organization has declared coronavirus a global health emergency, saying the virus is now a risk beyond China. So what does that mean for people here in the U.S.? The State Department has now announced the highest level do not travel warning for Americans planning to visit China. Now, many commercial air carriers have reduced or suspended the routes, and the United States now has its first person-to-person -person case. Health officials say a Chicago man contracted the virus from his wife, bringing the total number of cases here in the U.S. to six. And while officials are scrambling to control the spread of coronavirus here in the United States. Yeah, over in Wuhan, it's the city where this originated. It's a ghost town, basically. At least 200 people have died. 9,000 are sick. A Michigan man living in China describes what life is like as the virus spreads. I feel a little confined. <laughs> Here by myself, you know, I don't really have to worry about anybody coming in or out or anything like that. So, and as long as I'm in one space, I probably feel more comfortable here than going outside. Yeah, maybe a little lonely, but safety first. Back here at home, school districts are starting to send letters to parents about coronavirus. Coming up at 5, our Haley Hernandez will join us with that message. 436 now new this morning. Deputy constables are investigating after a game room bust overnight. It was discovered on uh, Ticonderoga Road near Van Hut Lane, northeast Harris County. Uh, investigators say about 100 machines were found inside. Deputies have not released much information on arrests. They say they'll do that later this morning. The teen suspect accused of killing 19-year-old Cesar Cortez inside Bel Air High School is set to appear in court. The district attorney says the suspect told authorities where to find the gun used in the shooting. Uh, the detention hearing for that teenager is set to begin this morning at 8.30. This morning, a three-year-old boy is in the hospital in critical condition, and deputies are now trying to figure out how he was injured. Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez tweeted the boy's injuries appear to be intentional. That boy was initially brought to Kindred Hospital in northwest Harris County and then taken by a medical to the medical center by Life Flight. 
President's impeachment trial could be all wrapped up today. The Senate has concluded the question and answer period. And today, senators will debate and then vote on whether to call those additional witnesses. If that vote fails, they could vote by the end of the day to acquit President Trump. But Republican Senator Susan Collins, a key impeachment swing vote, says she will support calling additional witnesses in the president's trial. The Democrats need at least four Republican votes for this. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton and acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney are among the witnesses Democrats have called on to testify. Well, J.J. Watt is getting ready to host Saturday Night Live this weekend. And last night, the Texan star stopped by Jimmy Fallon for a pretty wild challenge. Yeah, coming up, we'll have this crazy game that had uh, J.J. feeling the heat. It left him in tears, <laughs> Brenda, believe it or not. I love this challenge, but I can't help but feel bad for Jimmy Fallon because he's doing it every time with each and every <laughs> big star. That's his idea. I mean, J.J. said had to do it once, right? Uh, let's take a live look into Galveston this morning. We're waking up to cloudy skies. You might see a spot spritz, and temperatures are in the low to mid-50s. So what are our rain chances as we head into the weekend, especially with it being Super Bowl weekend? We have details in your forecast coming up. Thank you, Britta. Firefighters have been battling fires across Australia for several months now. Coming up next, this newly released video that shows just how quickly a bushfire can move in. Time right now, 4.38. At 10. Good morning. Your time is 441. We are waking up to cloudy skies and we're tracking some rain on exact track radar, but it's all to the south of us. So good news there. You might see an isolated sprinkle between now and sunrise, but after that, the chance is pretty much out of here. And we're even going to see a little bit of sunshine today. Let's take it hour by hour again before sunrise. An isolated sprinkle is possible. It's not going to slow you down. We are not anticipating wet roads by any means. And dropping the kids off at school, it's going to be cool around 50 degrees with cloudy skies. Throughout the day, we start to work in a little more sunshine and you're going to notice that late in the afternoon so for school pickup mostly cloudy partly cloudy skies temperatures today getting pretty close to 60 degrees and then we'll clear out the skies for tonight so the evening commute tonight you might actually need to use your sunglasses for part of that that'll be a nice change of pace i have more sunshine to talk about in your weekend forecast coming up next nice change thank you Britta. well a small group of european union supporters gathered outside of the uk parliament in london to show their sadness over brexit britain officially leaves the eu today and it will now go into a transitional period until the end of the year. During that transition, the country will remain part of the EU's original trade deal. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson says 11 months should be enough time to work out a new deal between Britain and the EU for goods and services. Boy, a shocking video shows a bushfire turn an Australian countryside into a blazing inferno. Uh, we sped up the video and make it more of a time lapse just so you can see the whole thing. But, but this only took four minutes and it got out of hand quickly. Fire crews wow. have seen uh, bracing for the flames being, being fueled by the strong winds just with incredible force pushing it across the street. Authorities say the crew was safe uh, and, and uh, out of view, of course. But uh, boy, oh boy, dangerous work there as the bushfires very, continue. Very scary. New Astros manager Dusty Baker is calling his new job a fresh start for him and the team. We're going to hear from him straight ahead. Good morning. Time right now is 445 on a Friday. Live look outside at the Southwest Freeway. 50 degrees out there. Britta will have your full forecast coming up in just a few moments. Well, it's been a big week for the Astros. New manager. Maybe some new, more new changes for the team uh, coming up. Randy caught up with Dusty Baker, though, to see how he's prepping for this fresh start. Welcome into the Xfinity Sports Desk this morning. Here's what's happening. The Astros have made it official. They've got their new manager on board, Dusty Baker, introduced yesterday. Baker flew in from his hometown of uh, Sacramento yesterday morning, met with the media in an afternoon press conference alongside his new boss, Astros owner Jim Crane. Baker, who is 70, told us uh, he thought his career was over after being let go by the Nationals after the 2017 season, but now he says it's a brand new start not only for him, but this baseball team. You know, this is a new beginning. It's a new beginning for us, a new beginning for me. And I think that, that the thing that we have is the amount of love that I see uh, that the players have for this city and the city has for the players and also the cities have for each and the players have for each other. He likes to win. He hates to lose. And our players are like that. So if we play, the only way you fix this deal is that we win. 
That's what it's all about. They're a couple days out now for Super Bowl 54 in Miami. Chiefs slight favorites over the Niners. They'll play it on Sunday. But around the media center there in Miami, there's plenty of buzz centering on the Texans. And are they underachieving, relying too much on the trio of guys like Watson, Hopkins, and Watt? Deion Sanders and Kurt Warner weighing in. Players that could make a play, so you don't have to depend on those four mentioned. Players that can really make a play consistently. They need consistency. They're a young team, but they need consistency. One game you're like, oh my gosh, these guys are going to be the next Super Bowl winners. And then the next game you're like, what the heck just happened? Where, you know, where did their offense go? You should never see those kind of swings with an offense. All right, a little criticism there from Warner and Sanders. Last stop on the reel, the world's favorite hippo has made her Super Bowl pick. This is Fiona from the Cincinnati Zoo picking the Kansas City Chiefs. And how does she make it clear who her pick is by doing that? Uh, I don't know, just tossing maybe a previous meal right there, but it's clear Fiona will go with the Kansas City Chiefs. Hey, one other note, congrats to uh, Rockets guard Russell Westbrook. He was named a reserve for the NBA All-Star Weekend coming up in the middle of the month. He and the Rockets, by the way, on the floor tonight. They'll host the Dallas Mavericks at Toyota Center. Reminder to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at KPRC2 Randy McAvoy. Have a great day, and we'll see you tonight. Thanks, Big Mac. 447 now. Let's check some top stories around the nation. A public memorial service for Kobe Bryant and the eight others uh, killed in the helicopter crash will take uh, weeks, according to uh, L.A. officials. This morning, the company that owns the helicopter that crashed says it is suspending all flight service for operational reasons. All this as investigators work to determine the cause of the crash. The world continues to grieve for the victims. There was a vigil held for a 13-year-old crash victim, Alyssa Altabelli. Her father was a former UH baseball player and coach, uh, and her mother, uh, the three, were killed in the crash. Uh, Kobe's friend, former NBA star Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, announced he's donating all proceeds from his Funhouse pre-Super Bowl party tonight to the victims' families. President Trump is delivering her remarks at the White House Summit on Human Trafficking today, which is organized by his daughter, Ivanka Trump. Several anti-trafficking organiza organizations in the U.S. have decided to boycott this event. They say the boycott is due to the president endangering immigrants, a large portion of trafficking victims. Well, this marks the end of an era for all of us here at Channel 2. Our friend and anchor Bill Baez is retiring tonight after nearly 50 years on television. We've been celebrating his career all week. Last night, we had a great dinner at the Palm on, on Westheimer in honor of Bill. Some famous faces have been sending their well wishes, too. Bill, Houston is going to miss you. You've had an amazing career, and we hope the next chapter brings you and your family much happiness. Yeah, Hoda just uh, wanted, I mean, they played a video last night with just uh, so many folks. Um, that we've known over the years. Uh, Bill, uh, Mayor Turner came along, made today uh, Bill Baez a day. But the thing I love is the caricature on the wall there. If you get booth number eight, that's the Bill Baez booth. Nice. And everybody's yelling at me to get out of the way, but I got some great <laughs> video, and I'm going to put that on Facebook later. But it was, it was uh, you know, it was really a beautiful, a beautiful thing. A lot of the giants of Houston television came out last night, so it was good to see. We'll play some of that throughout the morning. That's amazing. What a great night. Congratulations, Bill. I know. Uh, it's crazy. It's the last night tonight. I can't believe it. Anyway, we're going to have a lunch party, too. Y'all ready to? Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Anyway. All right. I'm going to have to check out the video from that dinner. Oh, yeah, I'll show it to you guys. Yeah, I right right see up it. in there. It was a cool moment. Yeah. That's really neat. It's fun. Very cool. Well, weather, a little cool this morning. Yes. Who's ready for sunshine? Uh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think everybody's ready for it. Our floor directors, yes, please sign me up. Uh, so we are in for a beautiful weekend. Today's not a bad Friday, but it still has a little bit of clouds in that forecast. We're waking up to cloudy skies and cool temperatures, but we'll see breaks of sunshine as we go into the afternoon. That's the live look over downtown right now. We are waking up pretty close to 50 degrees. Still expect our temperatures to be cool today, but as we go throughout the weekend, that's when we get to enjoy the warm up. Right now, we're at 50 degrees of Bush Airport. 
Airport, 48 in Conroe, 49 degrees in Sugarland, and upper 40s right now in Anahuac. As we get closer to lunchtime, we'll keep it cool in the 50s, pretty close to 60 degrees this afternoon, so temperatures are still running below average for this time of year, and only breaks of sunshine expected. Now we are tracking some rain to the south of us. We've been talking about this system all work week long. We thought it was going to give us a pretty soggy Friday morning. Well, the good news is it's tracking down to the south, so you might see a sprinkle between now and sunrise. That's pretty much it. Not much to write home about. All that rain is pushing out to the east. Behind it, we clear out the skies. So coming up for tomorrow, we have sunshine taking over. Mid-60s expected. We're back to the 70s by Sunday. Just a beautiful Super Bowl weekend. As we go to next week, we're still looking warm for the beginning of the week, but we start to work in these rain chances as a cold front gets closer and closer. Behind this cold front is a blast of very cold air. You can see the snow and winter weather actually working its way into North Texas. This is going to be for next Wednesday. So if you are traveling to North Texas next Wednesday, they are expecting some winter weather. Will we see it here? Probably not. Looking at some pretty hefty rain chances for Wednesday, but it looks like the rain leaves before the cold air arrives. So yes, we're going to have winter temperatures, but I think it's going to be too dry to actually see winter precip. We'll keep close eye on it though. This is how it's going to play out for us. Mid 60s for tomorrow, low 70s for Sunday, beautiful Super Bowl weekend. Then we work in those showers and thunderstorms and we do dip down dramatically. We're talking 30s for overnight lows next week, but again, we're anticipating dry weather by the time that cold air arrives. Eric, over to you. All right, good looking forecast, especially into the weekend. We like that. Good Friday to you. I hope you're having a good start to the day. Early commuters in great shape this morning. North Freeway, Gulf Bank, no problems whatsoever. You're approaching the Shepherd Curve typically during a morning drive. Uh, it's pretty sluggish at that point. Right now, though, looking good. So is 288. 288 at McCard, no problems. And on the east side of town, the East Freeway at Beltway 8, uh, barely any cars on the roadway right now. Reverse commuters on the east side, both on I-10 and 225, looking at a 15-minute drive out to Laporte and to Baytown. And your inbound drive times continue to be delay-free. 11 minutes in from Pearland, Sugarland, a 24-minute drive. And Katie, you've got 21 minutes in from Mason Road to downtown. Drive safely. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. Time right now is 4.53. Here's a look at what's trending today. Super Bowl Sunday, now just two days away, and just as exciting as the big game, the halftime show. It is going to feature Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Both superstars express their gratitude for this opportunity to perform at the Super Bowl. The stars also promised a Kobe Bryant tribute during the halftime show, which will also feature DJ Khaled. Singer Demi Lovato will sing the national anthem, and Houston Zone Yolanda Adams will perform America the Beautiful. Well, the day before uh, this uh, Super Bowl weekend, J.J. Watt, well, the night before, he'll be taking his talents to New York for the SNL stage. He's been promoting it all week. Last night, he was at Jimmy Fallon's show, uh, and he played a game with Jimmy where celebrities eat spicy chicken wings while answering questions. Ah, it looks like the spice might have gotten the best of number 99. On the topic of JJ hosting SNL this weekend. Screw us, I know. I'm here. I need him. I love SNL. I'm hosting. You should probably. Jesus, man. What advice, if any, do you have for JJ? Uh, read the cards. I need advice for this, Jimmy. Do the sketch. The air hurts. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, you know, you can watch SNL right here on Channel 2. Saturday night, he's going to do great. Oh. And we'll see how the skits are. Definitely. It's all to the writers, I guess, at that point. Yeah, it's all right, very we've true. got uh, team coverage of the Super Bowl in Miami live this morning. That is right. Coming up at 5, we're going to hear from NBC's Jay Gray about the excitement building. Then at 6, our very own Ari Alexander chats with Texans D Hop as the two best teams in football get ready to go head to head. Still to come this morning, uh, folks who can't seem to keep still while sitting down or laying down may have restless leg syndrome. Coming up, why people suffering from that condition say the treatment has basically been at a standstill for decades now. Stay with us. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Good morning. A total closure along the West Loop set to begin tonight. What you need to know to avoid the traffic nightmare this weekend. And more than 200 people are now dead in the coronavirus outbreak. How Houston area school districts are now responding to this global health emergency. 
The impeachment trial could be over today. I'm Tracy Potts. Coming up, a critical vote on whether to allow witnesses. It's 5 o'clock right now uh, on this Friday, the 31st. Good morning. I'm Owen Conflenti. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. Eric is in with a look at traffic. Good morning. How are we looking? Uh, we're looking pretty good right now. I think the morning commute is going to go off without a hitch. I'm predicting that we are going to be accident-free this morning, and my job's going to be easy, and your commute's going to be easy. And I like home. where your head's We're hoping. <laughs> because you know what? Tonight on the West Loop... It's all, all, yeah. Big old mess. Games <laughs> off. You know what's going to break. <laughs> saying it can't be worse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah. gotcha. Don't so worry. Actually, all, all weekend, yeah. really. Yeah. Eric's yeah. got your back on that. If you, if you haven't heard about it, you definitely want to listen to him. <laughs> uh, you know, weather, not bad. You know, we have cloudy skies, but we're dry. Mm -hmm. And we're in for a beautiful weekend. Wait until you see Saturday and Sunday's forecast. If you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard, sun is going to return Ooh. to southeast Texas. So there's a live look from our tower camera. Uh, we're still waking up to cloudy skies this morning, but as as we go throughout the later half of this afternoon, we'll see breaks of sun. Let's take a look at exact track radar. We've had light sprinkles overnight. Right now we're looking fairly dry, but if you see an isolated spritz, it's possible. It's not going to slow you down, and we are anticipating dry roads. The area of low pressure creating those sprinkles and cloudy skies. It's well to our south. It is tracking out to the east. It's going to be pushing into Louisiana. So again, a mainly dry forecast. Temperatures, upper 40s, low 50s. Because we have a lot of clouds in place, we're not going to see a huge warm-up today, but we'll add on a few degrees compared to yesterday, and we're getting up to about 60 degrees. We have 70s on the way. We'll take a look at that coming up. Eric, over to you. All right, I'm looking forward to a little bit of warmer weather, Britta. Thank you for that. Time save for traffic now. Accident-free around town. You're leaving home shortly. You should be in great shape. A lot of green on the map behind me. That's exactly what we like to see. The 610 loop right now is looking good, and our Houston Transtar camera is looking fine. Northwest Freeway FM 529 that's out by the Beltway. Not many cars on the roadways, as you might expect at 5.02 in the morning. 2.25 at Preston, well, that shot's a little on the strange side. It doesn't show any roads, but hey, 2.25 is flowing nicely, too. In fact, every major artery into town is delay-free at this hour. Now, we talked about the construction on the 610 loop. I'm going to reserve the details on that for hey, or for Sophia, I should say. Uh, but a couple of other spots to think about this weekend. I-10, right near downtown, westbound. Two lanes will be closed all weekend long between the East Tex Freeway and San Jacinto Street. Another spot on I-10 on the east side of town is going to be out near this uh, San Jacinto River. We've got a couple of names, lanes neck down eastbound, so that will cause minor delays. But we've got bigger delays in closer to town, and uh, Sophia is going to talk to you about that coming up. Thank you, Eric. And as Eric has been mentioning, there are going to be major closures along the West Loop and 59, and it all starts tonight. Yeah, there she is, Sophia Ojeda in the gallery area. Good morning. Uh, yeah, we got, uh, yeah, we got one last day here before it gets crazy. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, good morning, guys. Traffic expected to be a nightmare in this area beginning this weekend. So if you've got weekend plans, you got to figure them out and we're here to help you. So take a look. Here's a live look behind me. This is the West Loop. It's going to be closed in both directions here at 59 every weekend in February. Workers have to install new bridge beams. It's expected to cause a lot of backup in this already busy area. Now, here's a shot from our Sky 2 camera. This really gives you a good perspective of just how large this project is. TxDOT says workers will be hanging those bridge beams for new connector ramps. That work begins tonight at 9 until Monday at 5 a.m. All main lanes, all of them, of the West Loop, both directions, will be shut down. And the work is going to continue every weekend in February. Yeah, so if you've got Super Bowl parties, if you've got weekend plans, if you're going shopping or working around here, this is just going to be a pain for sure. Even if you use 59 and not the West Loop, delays could be expected anywhere near here. TxDOT, though, is hoping they can get this done in three weeks. To get this project done as quickly as possible, it's really important. Uh, that's one of the most congested interchanges, not just in the state, but also in the country. There's a lot of movement in that area, so we want to make it as efficient and as safe as possible to get traffic moving. Okay, so there are various detours, but it will still be congested. Keep that in mind. Northbound traffic will be diverted onto the 610 feeder at West Park. Southbound will be diverted onto 59 southbound. Then you'll need to U-turn at Chimney Rock and take 59 north 
to get to 610 South. We've got more information on our website, click to Houston.com. We'll keep you posted on that. But really the best advice, if you can, is to avoid this area altogether for the next few weekends in February. Now coming up at six in our six o'clock hour, we'll be talking to drivers and hearing straight from you guys what you're feeling about this project coming up the rest of this month. Reporting live in the Galleria, Sophia Ojeda, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Can't wait to hear that. I'm sure people not too excited. Thank you, Sophia. All right, well, the coronavirus is now a global health emergency. At least 213 people have died with more than 9,700 cases. That is in China alone. So some of Houston's largest school districts are responding as things develop here in the United States. Our Haley Hernandez, health reporter, is here now with more on that story. Haley, good morning. Good morning, guys. So the U.S. is advising against travel to China. The State Department also telling Americans in China to leave, while school districts here at home are following following the developments closely, including Fort Bend ISD and Spring Branch ISD, both of them sending out letters to parents. In Fort Bend ISD's letter, they say in part, its school health service is closely monitoring all developments and is in communication with public health officials. Spring Branch ISD says <clears throat> health officials assure us that the immediate risk to our population is low at this time. Both districts also referring parents to the CDC's website and telling them about symptoms. There are at least six confirmed cases in the U.S., but there are so far none in Texas. The CDC says a Chicago man was infected by his wife after she returned from Wuhan, China. That is the first person-to-person -person case we know of in our country. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock, I'll tell you what work is being done on a possible vaccine for this virus. For now, live in the studio, Haley Hernandez, KPRC, Channel 2. All right, Haley, thank you. 506 now. New this morning, two men detained by sheriff's deputies after a 14 year old girl told them she was drugged and sexually assaulted. It happened around 11 o'clock last night in Northwest Harris County. Investigators say the teen was found in a car with two men in their 20s near the Northwest Freeway at Fry Road. They were responding to a runaway call when they found the girl. No word yet on whether those men will be charged. Also new, Harris County Precinct 1 deputies discover close to 100 gambling machines during an illegal game room bust overnight. Now this all unfolded uh, on Ticonderoga Road right near Van Hunt Lane in northeast Harris County. Deputies say they plan on giving some more information about this bust later this morning. Uh, police are investigating after a man was gunned down in a grocery store parking lot in East Houston. He was uh, waiting in the car while his girlfriend went into the store to shop. Deadly shooting at uh, the Fiesta last night at Wayside. Shoppers reported hearing multiple gunshots before the girlfriend returned to the car uh, to find her boyfriend dead. One woman says she spotted a man running from the scene. Investigators now looking to speak with witnesses and uh, searching for possible surveillance video. It's been one week since folks in Northwest Harris County experienced that terrifying explosion that killed two people and damaged hundreds of homes. Now Harris County officials, they have announced that they are suing Watson Grinding and Manufacturing, claiming the company violated Clean Air Act violations by emitting pollutants into the air at the time of the explosion. Meantime, an employee is also suing the company. Sean Rangel says the force of the explosion left him with severe injuries. He also says he had seen chemical leaks at the facility before. They would just get some kind of sealer to patch it. They would never try to cut the whole pipe. They won't shut the system down to replace the whole pipe. They would just patch it so we could keep on running. Officials at Watson say they will not comment on the ongoing litigation, but they told us they will be paying all employees 80% of their pay for the next 90 days. Sam right now is coming up on 509 this morning, only on two. A happy ending to a story that we first told you about on Wednesday. A woman's SUV stolen from a gas station with her two dogs inside. Well, now her car and her dogs have been found safe. Margaret Gonzalez says that she was inside of the Shell gas station on Homestead and Old Umble Road when her vehicle was stolen. Above all, she told us she just wants her dogs back. Well, after that story aired, Channel 2 reporter Jonathan Martinez caught up with Gonzalez, who told him the good news. Oh. 
Happy reunion there. Jonathan says after Margaret's SUV was stolen, it was found wrecked at an apartment complex. Someone nearby had taken in those dogs and was caring for them until they got them back to their mom. Oh, we could see President Trump acquitted by the end of the day. Still ahead at 5, NBC's Tracy Potts breaks down what could happen today in Washington as senators vote on whether to call witnesses in the impeachment trial. Britta, good morning. Good morning. We are tracking some rain to the south of us, and it's staying to the south of us. Who's ready for the weekend? We are heading into a gorgeous Saturday and Sunday. Details on your warm-up coming up. 10. Good morning, your time is 5:12. We are waking up to cloudy skies, tracking some rain to the south of us, and that's where it's going to be staying. Now, between now and sunrise, you might see an isolated sprinkle. It's not gonna slow you down, and we're gonna have dry roads for the morning drive. Let's pause the clock for school drop-off. Kids do need a light jacket this morning, close to 50 degrees, but wait until you see after school pickup and this weekend. Details on that coming up tonight. All right, thank you, Britta. Tonight, the Houston Rockets will be back at Toyota Center. Yeah, we've got uh, the Mavericks, but don't forget that game time's been moved up to 6.30. One man who won't forget since he'll be on the floor, Russell Westbrook, last night named a reserve for this year's All-Star team, which uh, takes place uh, next month. The game, that is, takes place next month in Chicago. Westbrook's been named an All-Star in nine of the past ten seasons. Well, tonight the Lakers will honor Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the seven other people who were killed in Sunday's helicopter crash. Coming up, what we know about a public memorial uh, that, and the ceremony honoring them and the plans for that. And all eyes on Capitol Hill right now. You are looking live at the Capitol as senators prepare to vote on whether to call witnesses in President Trump's impeachment trial. But will there be enough votes for that? NBC's Tracy Potts is following up on that. We'll hear from her coming up next. Good morning. It's a pivotal day in the impeachment trial of President Trump. In fact, it could be the last day. Lawmakers are deciding whether to allow witnesses and new evidence. Tracy Potts is in Washington this morning with how today could unfold. Owen and Tanaya, good morning. Good morning, everyone. If they vote for witnesses, this could go on for weeks. If not, it could be over today. And now Republicans think they have the votes to end it. Objection, the trial is adjourned. Where this impeachment trial is headed and how long it will last now rests in the hands of a few moderate Republicans. Overnight, Tennessee's Lamar Alexander announced he's against witnesses and new evidence. Susan Collins of Maine confirmed she's voting yes. Alaska's Lisa Murkowski is still on the fence. She and Senator Alexander left the Capitol late last night. I've got a lot that I have written down processing that. I Senator Murkowski promised a statement this morning. Without one more Republican, it's a tie. The vote fails. It's time to vote. I'm ready to vote and I'm ready to vote now. On Twitter, President Trump declared game over. I'm not, why am I not worried? I should be worried. The American people and frankly people all over the world no, it's a hoax. Democrats say they can finish up with new witnesses in a week, but it's looking like an uphill battle that former National Security Advisor John Bolton or anyone will ever take the stand. We know why they don't want John Bolton to testify. They just don't want the American people to hear it in all of its ugly graphic detail. After more than 90 questions Thursday, the president's lawyers say it's time to wrap this up. I look forward to, on Friday, this being over, and hopefully we can get back to America's business. It's a cliffhanger that could be over today. The White House wants to see this done before the State of the Union next week. For now, four hours of closing arguments today before that critical vote. In Washington, Tracy Potts, KPRC Channel 2 News. 518 in the final sprint to the Iowa caucuses. The senators running for president are in limbo in Washington, required by the Constitution to serve as jurors in the impeachment hearings. Senators Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, and Michael Bennett are juggling their day jobs and trying to run for the office in 2020. Candidates have been forced to cancel events and make some last-minute scheduling changes. Voters in Iowa say the senators' absence from their state comes at a crucial moment in the 2020 race. Here in Iowa, we like to meet them face to face. I know that they have a job to do, and I'm glad that that's uh, the most important thing. That's why you got boots on the ground. The Iowa caucuses are scheduled for Monday. Tonight, the Lakers will be back on the court for the very first time since Kobe Bryant's death. 
The team says there will be a ceremony before that game honoring Kobe, his daughter, and the seven other people who were killed in Sunday's helicopter crash. The Los Angeles mayor also says the city is right now working with the organization and the Bryant family to pre prepare a public memorial ceremony. But as of right now, no date or venue has been confirmed. The helicopter charter company has halted its services after that crash. A representative says it is for, quote, operational reasons. All right, well, it is a really bittersweet day here at Channel 2. Beloved anchor Bill Biasa is retiring, and tonight is his final newscast. That's right, the 10 o'clock news. It's be the last late news for Bill Biasa. Family, friends, uh, past and current co-anchors all celebrated his nearly 50-year career last night with a special dinner at the Palm. A video full of goodbye messages was played. Uh, here's some of what Dominique had to say. In 2004, we became co-anchors, and it's the longest standing TV husband relationship. In fact, the longest standing male relationship I think I've had. So thank you, you tick off that box. Thank you for being the most amazing TV husband, friend, funny man, and just all around really cool guy. Love you, B. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, the mayor came along, too, uh, with a proclamation, Bill Baeza Day. So, uh, you know, we'll uh, be sharing a lot of these memories and things. Uh, he's going to sign off, as we said again, uh, for the last time tonight at 10 o'clock here on KPRC Channel 2. That's amazing. Well, and Britta, you had a school visit, another one. I did, every Thursday, best day of the week. So yesterday, we actually took a trip down to Clear Lake, where Haley's from. She's watching, too. Yeah, a little love to you, Clear Lake. Uh, check it out. All right. Yeah. I'm excited. St. Clair. Thank you for having us out. <laughs> it was the entire Catholic school. Oh, wow. wow. This is one grade. Yeah, yeah, the entire school. Because it's good. Catholic Schools Week, so they're featuring, you know, a lot of really cool things for all the Catholic schools across town. So a thank you for welcome. hosting. I was going to say, yeah. big audience you had yeah. there. St. Clair knows how to do it. We had fun. And also, we had a lot of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts in the room, which made me think about Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're so good. So we'll share a little bit of some of the experiments that we did with St. Clair later on this morning in about a half hour. So thank you for having us. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday. We are so close to the weekend. And I love the weekend not only because it's Saturday and Sunday, but because we have awesome weather landing on Saturday and Sunday. That's the key part. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a live look at our Kaplan Sinus Relief Camera. We do have cloudy skies this morning. Temperatures pretty close to 50 degrees. That's so cool out there. Uh, kids, you do need to grab your jacket before you leave the door. Uh, but the good news is you don't need your umbrella today. We are at 50 degrees right now at Bush Airport. Upper 40s in Montgomery County. 49 degrees in Angleton and 52 degrees currently in Pearland. Now this afternoon we'll get pretty close to 60 degrees. Breaks of sunshine anticipated. It is going to be a beautiful, beautiful weekend with a really nice warm up. We're tracking some rain to the south of us this morning. That is pushing out into Louisiana. So you might see an isolated sprinkle between now and sunrise, but again, this is staying down to our south. Because it is moving out to the east, we get to enjoy a little bit of a clear out. There's a look at Saturday. We are going to have beautiful sunshine, mid 60s, 70 degrees back on Sunday with high pressure controlling the weather. And then next week, of course, we have changes. There's always changes right here in southeast Texas. We're tracking a pretty big cold front. So ahead of it, showers are possible on Tuesday. The cold front itself is going to roll through on Wednesday. There is a lot of cold air behind this. That is snow for North Texas. This is the middle part of next week. If you're traveling to North Texas, keep an eye on this weather system. For us, it looks like the rain will be out before the cold air arrives. You have to have them both at the same time to create any sort of snow or sleet. And right now, it's just not in the mix. So we are calling for rain on Wednesday of next week. The cold air arrives on Thursday. But it's a pretty big temperature swing. We're going to keep it warm this weekend, warm the beginning of next week, and then Bam, 50s are back with overnight lows in the 30s. Uh, that always happens in the wintertime, Britta. Temperatures up and down. Time saver traffic now, and we've got uh, a really good start to the Friday morning drive. So happy Friday to you. The weekend right around the corner. You just have one more day to get through, and so far, so good. As far as traffic goes here in Houston, uh, Gulf Freeway at Edgebrook, we're still fairly light. It is still before 6 o'clock in the morning, so we expect traffic to be really light this time in the morning. Katie Freeway at Washington.
Washington, same thing right near Memorial Park. Both directions were moving along nicely, so our inbound drive times are absolutely fine. We're in the green, no delays to speak of. You're in great shape if you're leaving home shortly. We do have a lot of weekend construction. Sophia Ojeda told us all about this closure uh, just a few minutes ago on the West Loop. Total closure at uh, the Southwest Freeway. North Loop, there's going to be a little bit of a delay here. Eastbound between the Hardy Toll Road and 59. Three lanes closed this weekend, so a little bit of a slow spot there, but nothing like what the West Loop is going to face. Back to you guys. All right, yes, sir. Eric Bray, thank you. 524. He's the new skipper for the Astros. He says he's ready to win. Coming up, we're going to hear more from Dusty Baker this morning. And good morning, everyone. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. If you had a hard time sleeping because you couldn't stop moving and kicking your legs, you might have restless leg syndrome. How to know if you have it coming up. Back Chevrolet. Good morning. If you still need to pay your 2019 property taxes today, is your last day to do so. Luckily, the people at the Harris County Tax Offices are ready for the last minute rushes. They are going to be open until 530 today. You can also pay them online. But remember, if you do owe 2019 property taxes and they are not paid by today, they will be considered delinquent and you will start to accrue, accrue interest. All right, well, he is making the rounds in New York City before his big debut on Saturday Night Live. Coming up, how things went for J.J. Watt on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. It, it is pretty exciting. You do not want to miss that. All right, traffic this morning moving along Lice City on the East Tex Freeway. We've got a few cars out there, but uh, no delays to speak of. We'll take a look at your current inbound drive times. That's coming up at the bottom of the hour. It's a couple of minutes away. And it's Friday. We're heading into a huge weekend. What will the weather be for your big Super Bowl party? I got the answer coming up. Star. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Breaking this morning, a police chase after one of their own vehicles. What we've learned about the man behind the wheel. Health authorities are working against the clock right now in the coronavirus outbreak. What's being done here and in China, where more than 200 people are dead. And get ready to make some detours. You probably don't want to hear about this, <laughs> but you need to. The West Loop will be shut down this weekend at the Southwest Freeway. Eric will show you how to get around this huge, soon-to-be mess. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for waking up with us. 5.30 now on a Friday. I'm Tania Wright. I'm Owen Kiplanty. Happy Friday. say it again? I know. Friday. <laughs> Friday. 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 <laughs> We love it. Well, yes. you know, unless you got to drive to the gallery. Uh, this yeah. Weekend. yeah, yeah. This weekend, uh, you know, it's one of the biggest closures I think we've ever had here in yeah. Houston. They're pretty much as big as they get. It's a hugely traveled stretch of freeway, and so we'll tell you a little bit about what to expect. And my advice is simply just avoid that entire area this weekend. It's the best advice I can <laughs> Stay, <away>. Stay home. <laughs> so be a friend and share Eric's social media <laughs> posts so everybody knows about it. Uh, if you do get caught in it, roll down the windows and enjoy the weather. It's okay. going to be great. We are in for sunshine, warmer temperatures, a beautiful weekend forecast. Today, a little bit of cloud cover to start things off, but we're dry, so we'll take what we got. Uh, we are tracking some rain, but it is to the south of us. All work week long, we are watching this potential system. The good news is it's kind of missing us. It's moving closer and closer to Louisiana. So if you are traveling out to the east, they're expecting some rain. For us, you might see an isolated sprinkle, not seeing anything on radar right now. We're going to keep it dry today. Temperatures, 50 degrees at Bush Airport, 54 in Galveston. 48 degrees in Katy and 49 currently in Tomball. This afternoon, we'll get closer to 60 degrees. It's still a cool day, only breaks of sunshine expected, but that sunshine takeover this weekend will work wonders for our afternoon temperatures. Details on that still ahead. Eric? All right, Britta, thank you very much. A little cool today, but you know, not a bad day. A little sunshine at the end to finish off the work week. We like that. We are accident free right now on area roadways, so the green behind me means we are moving along at posted speeds, which is good news. Happy Friday to you. Hopefully your day is starting out very well. Right now, West Loop at Westheimer, you can see uh, we showed this right at the bottom of the hour. It's flowing nicely. That's not going to be the case about 15 hours from now. It's going to be a much different case. Southwest Freeway at Beltway 8 coming in from the Sugarland area. You are absolutely fine. And our final look right now, North Freeway at North Main. No problems coming in from the north side. Your current drive times are in the green. Delay free. 11 minutes in from Pearland. That Sugarland drive will take you 25 minutes. Back to you.
Okay, Eric, thank you. Uh, we've got 5.33 on the clock this morning. Uh, breaking news now. A man's in custody after police say he stole a police car while in handcuffs and then led cops on a chase. That's right. This all ended on Highway 288 in Holmes, right on the south side, and that is where we find this morning Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli. So, Vincent, what can you tell us? Tonight, Owen, this is definitely a wild story. Officers say this all started as a traffic stop. They arrested the suspect for driving a stolen vehicle, but then the suspect stole a police cruiser. A chaotic situation. The suspect ran off that way. Rosando saw the suspect crash the police cruiser in a grassy field by his work. When I hear that kind of noise, that means some cars is going over the tracks. But I never thought it was going to be a police car. Authorities say around 2.30 this morning, the suspect was handcuffed in the back of a Pasadena police cruiser. Then somehow he got his hands in front of his body and stole the cruiser, leading officers on a high-speed chase. So he was handcuffed in the back, moved to the front, was able to access the, the front of the patrol car. Eventually, the suspect crashed in this ditch and was captured by police. The officers conducted a search with the assistance of HPD uh, air support. They were able to, to apprehend the suspect, and he is now in custody. You know, they never can uh, run away from the law. Authorities say that no one was injured and that the suspect will be charged with evading arrest and driving a stolen vehicle. Reporting live in Houston, Vincent Prevelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Vincent, thank you. It's 534 here. We're still working to learn how a three-year-old boy ended up with severe injuries. Last checked, he was still in the hospital. He was still in the hospital in critical condition. Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez tweeted, the boy's injuries appear to be intentionally caused. The boy was initially brought to Kindred Hospital in Northwest Harris County, but then they flew him to the medical center. They still haven't said how the child is hurt, but we're going to find out. Students at Lone Star College will head back to school today after reports of shots fired caused some chaos at the Kingwood campus yesterday. Uh, the school was actually placed on lockdown for several hours, uh, and then they just uh, canceled classes for the day. Police showed up within minutes to check things out. They didn't find anything. They gave the all clear for students and staff, but they were being escorted off campus. No one was hurt. New developments could come out today in the death of a Bel Air High School student who was shot inside of the school Earlier this month, the teen suspect accused of killing 19-year-old Cesar Cortez is set to appear in court this morning. Now, this all comes after the gun police say was used to kill Cortez was found. The DA says the suspect told them where to find it. That is all set to start at 8.30 this morning. All right, time right now is 5.35. Now to the very latest on the spread of the deadly coronavirus. We know there are now six confirmed cases here in the U.S., and one of them is the first known case of that virus being spread from person to person. So here's what we know right now. A Chicago man in his 60s who never traveled to China was infected by his wife after she returned from Wuhan. Now, trying to stay ahead of this outbreak, the White House has announced a new coronavirus task force. And overseas, thousands of professional medical personnel from China's armed forces have now been deployed to Wuhan. In addition, the Army has deployed more military medical teams on standby, ready to offer their help at any time. Coming up at 6, our health reporter Haley Hernandez has an update on when a vaccine for that virus could be ready. Well, it's 536 now. Senators will vote today on whether to allow witnesses in President Trump's impeachment trial. They wrapped up two days of questions yesterday. Chief Justice John Roberts actually refused to read Senator Rand Paul's question yesterday. Uh, it's believed it could have revealed information about the whistleblower. Uh, so he wouldn't do it. Today, senators will have four hours of debate before they vote. Republican Senator Lamar Alexander says there's no need for more evidence, which might mean the Democrats don't have enough votes and, uh, to uh, bring witnesses, and that would mean the trial would likely head to a very quick acquittal. So this can be done very quickly. This can be done, I think, effectively. But the Democrats are trying to overturn the last election. We will make sure that they face another crushing defeat. So if the senator's vote ends uh, in a tie, then it could fall to the Chief Justice John Roberts to decide what would happen next. The Astros' new manager, Dusty Baker, is working to finalize his staff. He was officially introduced yesterday. The franchise says the 70-year-old got his first hit in the league back in 1968 with the Braves in the Astrodome.
So he's full circle back in Houston now as the team's skipper. Dusty Baker says now he's ready to win. Man, this, this is a great team. I mean, I, you know, this was a great team before I got here. And, uh, you know, don't tell the Nationals I was rooting for this team to beat the Nationals. <laughs> uh, the team tweeted out this photo with the Baker and some of the players saying, day one with the fam. Tomorrow night, J.J. Watt is taking over Saturday Night Live in New York City. He tweeted this photo last night saying, nine years ago, a lifelong dream came true in the building on the left. Being drafted in the first round of the NFL draft, Saturday night, another dream comes true in the building on the right, hosting Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Truly thankful for this wild and incredible journey. Ahead of his debut, J.J. had some fun on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon last night. Topic of J.J. hosting SNL this weekend. Screw SNL. <laughs> I'm here. I just need him. I love SNL. I'm hosting it. You should probably... Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, JJ and Jimmy tore up some hot wings with the hot ones. I like the wings tore them yeah, I know, up. seriously. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. With the host there, uh, the wings, if you didn't know, get gradually spicier as it goes on. JJ and Jimmy tried to keep their cool, but as you can see, uh, they had a pretty tough time doing so. Is he crying? I would be crying. Oh, I would crying. not. We'll show the, you the how they... The producers watched the whole thing. I think they said he was crying. You can see his eyes. It's, I've it's, been there, man. I know it. It's not tears. Like, he, go over to wings and things and get the really hot stuff. Dude, he won't make it out. Woo. No. Well, after, J, after this is all done, <laughs> JJ broke out some dance moves. Look at him before he sat down with that interview with Jimmy. And he talked about... Oh, look at that. Talk, it, talked it, about his wedding plans. TikTok candidate now. I said, I want, my guests are from Wisconsin. We're, we're bigger people. I want a buffet, so we're gonna, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not like a Chinese buffet, guys, okay? It's a real buffet. It's like prime rib, like it's yeah, a buffet. You're going but, for it. I mean, I want my guests to be full. Full. Hey, that's why I like the Chinese buffet. I know. Honest, I, mean, I know. To be fair. Well, they'll probably have lots of, uh, prime rib and cheese curds. <laughs> Remember, you can watch JJ on SNL tomorrow night right here on Channel 2 starting at 1030. That is going to be a good one. Well, we are now just two days away from Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, our buddy Jay Gray uh, is on assignment in Miami. Hard job. Has he been up all night? I don't know. We're going to check in with uh, Jay, though, coming up on Channel 2 News today, 20 minutes to 6. At 10. All right, here we go. Super Bowl weekend, Super Bowl 54. Yes, football fans continuing to head down to Miami to see who it's going to be, the 49ers or the Chiefs, we will see. Also in Miami, NBC's Jay Gray is out there asking everyone the same question. Jay, this is a really tough assignment for you, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Denio, and I, I'm struggling with the, with the work uh, that I have to endure here. And and they tell me here in Miami you can have a good time. I, I don't know that firsthand, but I, I've heard that there's a lot of things to do here. Look, we're inside the Super Bowl experience right now. Kickoff not really until Sunday evening. We know that, but the games, well, they've already started. Look at that. Oh, and you got to be impressed with that, right? That's a pretty good catch. Wow. Um, wow. This place is going to be packed. Sixty-five thousand people get to go to the game. They all have tickets. Another 150,000 or more traveling to the area, and they've got to have something to do. A lot of them will spend their time here. I'm gassed. I don't know if I can keep going, guys. Bye. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Oh, boy, this is fun, though, that NFL experience. <laughs> I mean, uh, those of us that have covered that, that part of the Super Bowl, you know, they always have fun stuff for the fans, show you how to make a football, yada, yada. Um, yeah. And it gives you a chance in, uh, on reporters to get winded. Jay, um, <laughs> get your workout in in the morning. About the game itself. Yeah. <laughs> um, everybody loves the halftime show. What you know about that? Look, it, it, it's going to be really special, I think, this year. You've got J-Lo and Shakira, so two strong Latin women uh, are, are the headliners for this. They say that the focus of their show is going to be unity. They also have said uh, late yesterday that there will be a, a memorial to Kobe Bryant as, as part of this, a heartfelt mm. memorial is, is how J-Lo put it. So that, that should be really neat. It'll, it'll be fun to watch. The organizers say it's going to be the longest as far as uh, number of songs that we'll ever have in a halftime show. Interesting. So a big performance. Obviously, I mean, yeah, you couldn't do it this week without mentioning, mentioning Kobe, Kobe and, and, and his daughter and everyone else on board for no, sure. No, no.
Yeah, yeah. Definitely one to remember. Thank you, Jay. I we know. do appreciate it. Don't uh, work too hard yeah, out there. You know. <laughs> very Thank athletic, you though, man. I'm, I'm very impressed. <laughs> I know. Now, right, buddy. now I really See need to go later. to spinning today. <laughs> well, don't he forget. made you feel bad, huh? I know. I kind of feel bad well, about myself Jay for doing nothing yesterday. <laughs> don't forget to make your picks in our You Pick em contest. You can make your Super Bowl picks on clicktohouston.com slash contest. Pretty easy. There's only two teams left. Try to beat us. Right, yeah. Grand prize, $500 gift card to Freddy's. Good luck to everyone. Keep telling you, do like Vincent Crivelli. He gets up at 1 in the morning, does a full workout, people. He's, Not even kidding. The guy's it, amazing. He's insane. Then he eats his egg whites and right. everything. Right. No, I'll, I'll sleep. <laughs> well, it's going to be a beautiful weekend here in H-Town, weather-wise, but uh, getting around, not so beautiful. Yeah, the big uh, shutdown of the West Loop. We'll talk about that, Amy, coming up. Hey, well, the Houston Grand Opera is on the go. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis with where you can catch a free, family-friendly friendly performance this weekend. We've got your Freebie Friday report coming right up. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. How to know if you have restless leg syndrome and what can be done about it after the break. Time now, 545. In Texas. Good morning. Treatment for restless leg syndrome has basically been at a standstill for decades now. And that's left some patients suffering without any new hope. Well, health reporter Haley Hernandez is here with more on the story. Good morning. Yeah, I can't stress how frustrating this is for those patients. Patients with restless legs have an uncontrollable urge to move and kick their legs. Sometimes it's painful and usually it's difficult to sleep. The most frustrating part, as we mentioned, is that there's really not a lot of new treatments. Restless legs can be uncomfortable and uncontrollable. The kicking, moving, heebie-jeebie jumping feeling can make it hard to sleep or sit still at all. Dr. William Ondo at Houston Methodist Hospital says current medications on the market are effective, but there hasn't been anything new in decades. And for people who've been taking them for that long, they can stop working. So these days I end up spending more time dealing with augmentation for people that had been successfully treated on these medicines, much more than I see patients that have never been on them at all. And none of the medications are without side effects. We're never thrilled about using these chronically, but methadone in particular can be a very effective medicine. Medications are taken at night when symptoms are most noticeable. During the day, the doctor says movement and intense concentration can relieve the discomfort. A video game sometimes can improve RLS. Being angry, okay, can improve RLS. Getting into an argument can improve RLS. Sex can improve RLS, okay? Unfortunately, things like just like reading or watching TV, even if it's a fairly intense show, generally don't help RLS. So who gets restless legs? Dr. Ando says it partially has to do with genetics. It may have to do with iron deficiency. Usually women are most at risk, people in kidney failure and pregnant women. It typically gets worse over the years until old age. We're not sure exactly why that is, but again, it may have to do with the fact that when you get very old in your age, 80s and 90s, your, your brain iron actually starts to go way up. That's often thought to be a bad thing, but in RLS, it may be a good thing. Now, there are no real medical tests for RLS, but there are other ways to determine if you have it. So um, after the show, go up, go to our website, clicktohouston.com. I've got a lot of information there on what you can do to determine if you have it. Maybe if you take that information to your doctor, then you have some better words to tell them, like, these are the symptoms I'm feeling. And yeah, then try to figure out something that might help. Yeah. You know, in the meantime. Yeah. So maybe they figure I hope these out. people get relief. Definitely. Yeah. That has to be pretty not that great time. yeah thanks Haley so uh, as you know today is uh, our buddy Bill Baez's last day anchoring the news it is at channel 2 yeah it's been a long time a long time anchor he's going uh, to sign off for the very last time during the 10 o'clock newscast tonight Bill's family and friends celebrated his nearly 50 year long career last night at the Palms video Full of well wishes also played that included some familiar faces from the Today Show. 49 years on the air, Bell, that is incredible, but now you deserve some time to relax. Congratulations and happy retirement. Well, Bill, Dominique, Frank, and Randy have been anchoring together for several years. Frank posted this photo ahead of Bill's retirement. Bill will be signing off for the very last time tonight during our 10 o'clock newscast. I think it's been 16. Uh, that the four of them, of them have been together. It's a long stretch. Math is right, but wow, wow. man. Wow. Yes, congratulations and good luck. A lot of people put in orders last night for wooden boxes. 
I'm sure. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. Know? So here, well, you got some time, maybe. <laughs> I know. I was seeing them yesterday. That he's. Mm -hmm. Talented. My favorite is one that he makes with the wave formation. Th that's the one I like yeah, too. It's beautiful. I mean, he's so talented. And every retired person I talk to says they're busier in retirement than they are when they were working. So I'm sure he's going to find plenty of things to he do. He will be and loving very it. busy. Yes. Yes. 551 here, Channel 2 News. Today, before we get in the weather, uh, Britta had another school visit yesterday. I did. And we went to Clear Lake. So St. Clair had us out. You met the kids about a half hour ago. Here's part of the science experiments that we did with the kids yesterday. them every time. I love it. Uh, so this teaches the kids about chemical reactions, combining two things and creating something that didn't even exist with the power of science. So we made carbon dioxide inside that balloon. Mm -hmm. Somebody walked off with it. I don't know who the lucky kid was. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, don't worry. All the parents are like, oh, no, was that my kid? No, I gave permission. Mom, look so. what I did. Yeah, no, so we had a great time. Thank you for having us. I hope you're having a great start to your Friday. I know it's been a fun week, and uh, we're in for a beautiful weekend. Sunshine and warmer temperatures. I think everyone's ready for that. Let's take you outside and show you a little bit of cloudy skies to start our day off with, but you will need your sunglasses for the evening commute. That's a lot Live look outside at our cloudy skies. Uh, temperatures right now across the area, upper 40s, about 50 degrees, very similar to yesterday. We're at 50 degrees at Bush Airport, 49 in Conroe, 46 degrees currently in Navasota, 52 in Pearland, Galveston waking up to 54 degrees. Now this afternoon, we're going to keep it cool, but closer to 60 degrees. We'll see breaks of sunshine, a dry day with mostly cloudy skies expected. We do have rain on radar, but it's farther down to our south. This area of low pressure moving off to the north and east, so it is is going to miss us, but we'll have chances of rain come back in the forecast for next week and also a pretty big temperature swing. Let's talk about the swing up first. Tomorrow sunshine takes over. That'll be good enough to get us back up to the mid 60s. Then by Sunday, 70 degrees, high pressure providing just perfect weekend weather for your Super Bowl parties. And then as we head into next week, we work those clouds back in. Isolated showers possible by Tuesday, but the big event is on Wednesday. This cold front that we're anticipating during the middle part of next week has a ton of cold air behind it. If you are traveling to North Texas middle part of next week, keep an eye on the storm system. They are taking a look at some major winter weather. For us, it's a rain event. Uh, the rain's going to move out before the cold air arrives. You have to have them happen at the same time for snow or sleet here in southeast Texas. Right now, looks like we'll dry out before that cold air arrives, but look at that cold air. We're going from the 70s this weekend to the 50s for our afternoon highs, and Eric will be in the 30s for our overnight temperatures next week. Oh, 30s. Back to winter, Britta. All right, a little, little bit of a temperature roller coaster there, but the weekend looks nice. Looking forward to that. All right, this is our city cam, Southwest Freeway. We've got an accident blocking a couple of uh, center lanes on the inbound side of things. So Sugarland commuters, take note. It's going to take you a few extra minutes if you are headed out the door shortly. This one's been going on for about 10 minutes. This is the backup at our Beach Nut camera right now. Our current drive time coming in from the Sugarland area stands at 30 minutes. So we're looking at about a five to six minute delay on this one right now. It will continue to grow. So if you're heading out the door shortly, put a wiggle in it. You're going to need some extra time on this particular morning commute. This is a look at it on the map. You can see the bigger picture, though. We are seeing a lot of green on the traffic map right now, and that's exactly what we like to see this time in the morning because every other route into town looks a little bit more like this. This is 288 at airport. We are delay free right now. One more shot on our Houston Transtar cameras. We're going to go to the East Beltway. This is at I-10 East Beltway flowing nicely in both directions. Here are your current inbound drive times. Again, a little slow coming in from Sugarland. Elsewhere, though, we are problem free. Back to you. All right, thank you, Eric. Now here's Bill Spencer with a story. He's coming up at 10. It was supposed to be the best Christmas present 12 year old Sarah Harris ever got. But within hours, that dog was very sick. And just three days later, Sarah's new puppy was dead. Her parents blamed the dog seller, who charged them more than $2,000. Stop hurting people. Stop stealing their money. Channel 2 Investigates looks at the complaints from families who say this woman took their money and broke their hearts by selling very sick dogs. Tonight at 10. Morning, people. An opera, a movie, and a Mardi Gras. Mardi, geez, I can't even say it. Mardi Gras. <laughs> I'm already drinking. Mardi Gras parade in Houston. 
<laughs> well, not really. No, here. You joke. It's not all yet. free. It's all free, yes. And it's, it's all free. fun. Let's give you the rundown. <laughs> you can start with the family movie night tonight at Levy Park. For the whole family, take your picnic blankets, food, and drinks. They'll be showing a free screening of How to Train Your Dragon Hidden World. It starts tonight at 6.30. And then tomorrow, you can start celebrating Mardi Gras in Midtown. The Houston Creole Mardi Gras Parade starts at 9 in the morning. It goes from Midtown all the way to Discovery Green. Of course, they'll have trail riders in the parade, bands, and of course, lots of beads. Yes. T today and tomorrow, you can enjoy the beloved tale of Strega Nona. I think I'm saying that right, with the Houston Grand Opera to go. Performances are at 9.30 and 11 a.m. at the Heinen Theater. That's inside the HCC Central Performing and Visual Arts Building in Midtown. And all ages are welcome. So a lot of fun. We've got those freebies and we'll have others posted after our show on Click to Houston. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Just about 6 o'clock now, happening today, a big vote in the impeachment trial of President Trump. What happened late last night that could bring the trial to an end very soon? A traffic alert could wreck your entire weekend if you do not pay attention to us. The big closure starting tonight that you don't want to get stuck in as you're heading out to your Super Bowl party. Got your forecast here moments away, and it's a chilly start to this Friday morning. We've got 50 degrees at the Channel 2 studios. Keep your jackets handy. Will you need them for the weekend, though? Britta's standing right next to me to tell you. <laughs> so do this Friday the 31st, last day of the month. Good Man. morning. I'm Owen Conflinty. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. Eric is in with a check on the roads. How are we looking? But I'm sure it's nothing compared to what's to come this weekend. <laughs> yeah, this evening and over the weekend, we've got much bigger problems. Mm -hmm. Right now, we had an accident on the Southwest Freeway. That has just cleared. It's so a little bit of a residual slowdown. But overall, the morning drive is looking good right now. So Enjoy it while you can. Nice. Yeah, and it's Friday. We have awesome weekend weather. Lots of stuff to be excited about this morning. Not a lot of sunshine, but it is on the way. We are expecting breaks of sunshine this afternoon. That's a live look at our cloudy skies. I know it's dark, but they're out there. Uh, temperatures are currently pretty close to 50 degrees. And we're tracking some rain on Exact Track radar. It's just farther down to the south. We talked about this weather system all work week long. The good news is it's continuing to make that south track like we expected. And we are waking up to dry weather. We're looking really good. There's a look at exact track radar, you might see an isolated sprinkle. One example of that, Brazoria County right now, it's not going to slow you down. We're not going to have wet roads. So yay, good news there. Uh, 48 degrees in Tomball. Right now in Ingleton, we're at 50, 49 in Conroe. Now because we're still going to be fighting the clouds today, it's going to be a relatively cool day. Eric, we're going up to about 60 degrees. We'll talk about our sunshine takeover coming up next. Over to you. All right, sounds good. Britta, thank you very much for that. I want to remind you guys, Southwest Freeway and the West Loop. This interchange is going to be a nightmare over the weekend. We've got closure at the Southwest Freeway on the West Loop. Sophia Ojeda will be here in just a second to give you more details on it, but avoid this area this weekend if you possibly can. Fair warning on that. Southwest Freeway at Beechnut. We had an accident between Beechnut and Bel Air that has cleared, so we're starting to see things kind of line out on the Southwest Freeway. Still looking at a 30-minute drive into town, so a few-minute delay, but that will be improving, I think, as we head forward. Now, take a look at what's going on. You can see the delay here on the Southwest Freeway, but everywhere else we are absolutely fine. We don't have any other incidents that we are talking about. So most roads look like this, getting a little busier, but still moving along at posted speeds. Our inbound drive times right now still in the green across the board, again, with the exception of that Sugarland commute. Back to you guys. Okay, Eric, thank you. Uh, 602, let's go to breaking news. Just into the newsroom about the deadly explosion that happened a week ago today. We've just learned there'll be a, a hearing at 8.30 this morning in the case. Uh, one of the attorneys tells us that he filed an emergency motion late last night on behalf of more than 130 homeowners. The motion is asking the city of Houston not to remove any evidence from the area. The attorney says the city is taking over the explosion scene from the ATF at noon. We'll be at the hearing this morning. To let you know what happens, check in on air or online at click2houston.com. More breaking news this morning, this time out of North Houston. That's where police say a woman is dead after hitting a pole with her car. This all happened at Sunnyside Street and Nordling Road. That woman was rushed to the hospital after the crash, but she was pronounced dead. We have a crew heading to the scene now and we'll get you the very latest updates as we continue to learn more. Tracking a traffic alert you need to know about this weekend. Definitely, Eric Braid is going over the routes that you need to know, but our own Sophia Ojeda is live now from right near the lanes closing tonight on the West Loop. So, Sophia, this is going to be a huge mess, and it's going to be for a while. 
Good morning, Owen and Tanaya. Yeah, traffic expected to be a nightmare beginning tonight, expected through the weekend, not only this weekend, every single weekend in the month of February. Drivers we spoke with say they are not looking forward to it. It's going to be a real mess. I'm just glad I'm off the weekend and I don't have to put up with it. The view from high above our Sky 2 cam really gives you a good perspective of just how large this project is. The project will cause major delays and huge headaches for drivers who are working weekends, shopping, headed to those Super Bowl parties. TechStot says workers will be hanging bridge beams for new connector ramps beginning tonight at 9 until Monday at 5 a.m. All main lanes of the West Loop will be shut down in both directions and the work will continue every weekend in February. Business owners are just as worried too. It's killing our business. It's making things really slow around here. It's hard to get back and forth to work. So it's really bad. Okay, here are the detours you need to know about. Southbound traffic will be diverted onto 59 southbound. You'll need to turn around at Chimney Rock and take 59 north to get to 610 south. Northbound traffic will be diverted onto the 610 feeder at West Park. TxDOT says they will try to finish up this work in three weeks instead of the entire month of February, but they say it's still going to cause some major backup backups here. If you can avoid this area, you're asked to do so. Reporting live in the gallery is Sophia Ojeda, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you, Sophia. New this morning, we are working to learn if charges will be filed against two men after a 14-year-old girl claims they drugged her and sexually assaulted her. According to deputies, the alleged incident happened at about 11 o'clock last night in Northwest Harris County. Investigators say that teen was found in a car with two men in their 20s near the Northwest Freeway in Fry Road. They say they were responding to a runaway call when they found that girl. Over in Fort Bend County, a trial is expected to get underway later this morning for the man charged in the 2017 shooting death of an eight-year-old girl. Jacoby Payton is accused of killing Damari Atkins. Atkins was shot while she was sitting in the backseat of her mother's car after a crash on Fuquay in the Beltway. Payton's trial is scheduled to start at 9 a.m. An investigation is underway after a woman's grocery shopping trip ended with the discovery of her boyfriend shot dead in a car. This happened in the parking lot of a Fiesta last night on Wayside, uh, Wayside Drive that is, in East Houston. Shoppers reported hearing multiple gunshots and the girlfriend, re girlfriend returned to the car to find her boyfriend dead. One woman says she spotted a man running from the scene. Investigators are looking to speak with more witnesses. They're also looking for surveillance video. Time right now is coming up on 6.07 this Friday morning, developing in the battle over President Trump's impeachment, a key Republican that was seen as one who might sway towards wanting witnesses to testify, says the Senate has seen enough evidence. That's what Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander said last night when the senator's trials adjourned last night. Republican Susan Collins has already broken rank from the Republicans. The senator from Maine says she supports hearing from witnesses and seeing more documents. A vote is expected to happen today on that matter. Coming up at 6.15, NBC's Tracy Potts will break down what to expect when that goes on today. All right, while the coronavirus crisis is growing as that virus continues to spread in China. But here in Texas, there are still no confirmed cases by any local health departments. In China, though, the country's military is mobilizing, sending thousands of medical personnel into the city of Wuhan. Yesterday marked the country's deadliest day battling the coronavirus. 40 people reportedly died, now raising the death toll to 213. Almost 10,000 people are infected worldwide. About 60 million people are in lockdown right now to prevent the spread of coronavirus. In the United States, sorry, I jumped ahead. Nope, you're good. Yesterday, the World Health Organization finally took action. They declared the coronavirus a global emergency, but only after a number of infected multiplied tenfold in a week. So as I was saying here in the United States, doctors are scrambling after the first reported case of human to human transmission in this country. Uh, so they're treating a husband and a wife for the virus. There are four other people in the United States uh, that are infected, but hundreds of others are being tested for possible infections. For more on the coronavirus throughout the day and the weekend, stay with us here at KPRC Channel 2.
Coming up on today, the mother of Heidi Broussard, the woman kidnapped and murdered in a bizarre plot to steal her baby, opens up for the first time since her daughter's body was found in Houston. I mean, you can't explain in words how you really feel. I mean, your heart is overwhelmed, but at the same time, my daughter was gone. Today we'll hear more from Tammy Broussard on her daughter's death, her granddaughter's safe recovery, and how she feels about Megan Firamuska, the woman charged in Heidi's murder. That exclusive preview, preview that is, airs this morning before a special dateline tonight at 9 o'clock. Well, it's the end of the road for a Channel 2 staple. Bill Baeza retires tonight. Well, tonight's the night. How we honored him last night, celebrating a huge legacy he leaves behind here at Channel 2 for the city of Houston. Good morning. Time to kick off the weekend. A live look in Galveston. We have cloudy skies. Temperatures right now in the 50s, so grab a light jacket. I am tracking rain on radar. We'll talk about your rain chances coming up. And traffic a little sluggish westbound on the North Loop, approaching the North Freeway. Traffic trying to get onto the North Freeway. Heading toward the Woodland, having a little trouble. Google Maps reporting an accident there, but that's all that's going on around town. Just that. We'll take a look at your current inbound drive times uh, coming up a little bit later this half hour. So do stay tuned. Right at 10. 612 right now here at Channel 2 News Today. It's the end of an era. For us here at Channel 2, longtime anchor Bill Baez signs off for the last time tonight. And last night, we celebrated his long career of service. Service to the country, service to the city, service to journalism, family, friends, and co-workers past and present. We all gathered to honor Mr. Bill Baeza. Messages of love were played throughout the night. We had a great video with folks congratulating him on his retirement. He got his own caricature above booth number eight at the Palm. M Mayor Sylvester Turner showed up. His honor proclaimed today, Bill Baeza Day. And a photo from last night that uh, they wanted Aww. to share with you. I didn't know they even captured this one, but uh, I gave a few words of my own before I left to go to bed. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, you know, Bill and I got to hug it out. I mean, he's, he's just a great man, and that's just a fact of nature. He's just a great guy, um, and we're all going to miss him for, for various reasons. So good luck, my friend. That's Definitely all I have to say about that. the end of an error here yeah. at Channel 2. Great night. All right, well, coming up, does the man behind Tesla and SpaceX have a new career in the works? Big question. When Elon Musk dropped overnight, that could he's have taken been... taking Bill's job? Wait a minute. What's he that? might. <laughs> Tune in tonight at 10 to find out. <laughs> Time right now is coming up on 616 on this Friday. It's a pivotal day in the impeachment trial of President Trump. In fact, it could be the last. Lawmakers are deciding whether to allow witnesses and new evidence. Tracy Potts live this morning on Capitol Hill with the big developments overnight. Tracy, good morning. Tonight, good morning. Overnight, we learned one lawmaker who's voting for witnesses and one who's voting against. They need four Republicans in order to make this work. Anything less than that, even a tie, and it fails. And Republicans now think they have the momentum to move forward to a final vote on the president's guilt or innocence today if that vote fails. So we're uh, really sort of in limbo here. If, it, if it's approved, witnesses could extend this trial several weeks. Democrats are saying they can do it in a week, though. Um, if it's not, then we could be looking at several hours, the end of the day, uh, before this is a done deal. The president in Iowa last night said he's not worried at all. He tweeted, it's game over. Uh, Democrats hoping, uh, and we heard Nancy Pelosi, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, saying that she hopes that uh, Republicans have the will to hear some of the evidence and some of the witnesses that they did not hear on the House side. Tanaya. All right. Thank you, Tracy. And of course, you can watch all of that right here on Channel 2 starting at noon and on clicktohouston.com. 617. Elon Musk has a lot of titles. Billionaire, tech genius, there's a couple of them. How about DJ? Oh. Apparently, he's changed his Twitter name to EDM and then dropped a track on SoundCloud, <laughs> SoundCloud overnight titled Don't Doubt Your Vibe. Check it out. Uh, 
the, the, random. the futuristic truck logo there. Is that a little, is a little, if we're going to do that, then I'm going to post, post my Abso Facto Dissolve remix on SoundCloud, buddy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Elon's been teasing this song for a while, and then I guess he finally got into the studio. It's because there's the pictures from the studio, in case you hmm. didn't think he actually it was did it or if whatever. it's not on social media it never happens right. <laughs> <laughs> now, we see it happen. <laughs> now, now we know it's true there you go. man yeah. all right friday how are we looking uh so far so good a couple of hiccups but mm -hmm. um in the grand scheme of things the morning drive is going along without too many hitches we'll kind of run down the list it's a short one uh, but we'll do that in just a couple of minutes all right. yeah we're getting ready for some sunshine warmer temperatures the 10 days a little bit of a whiplash i'm not gonna lie there's a lot going on uh so stay tuned this this is a look from our tower camera this morning. It's a little cloudy out there, but we're dry. Temperatures upper 40s to just about 50 degrees. We're at 50 right now at Bush Airport, but in the upper 40s in Montgomery County, 49 degrees currently in Sugarland, 50 in Angleton, Anahuac, 48 degrees. And in Brenham right now, um, we are at 47 degrees. This afternoon, we'll top off pretty close to 60, mostly cloudy skies. So it's going to be a rather cool day. A good idea to have a light sweater with you throughout the day. If you have plans after work, heading out to dinner, we'll still be in the 50s as late as about 7, 8 o'clock in the evening. We have rain on radar this morning. It's just farther down to the south. We've been tracking the system for the entire work week, and it's keeping uh, down to the south, which is good news to pass along. You might see an isolated sprinkle. Dry roads, though, it's going to be a dry day. Our next chance of rain will not be until the middle part of next week. So until then, we get to enjoy some pretty awesome weather. Sunshine for tomorrow. That will get us back to the mid-60s, but our winds back on shore work all the magic. We're expecting 70s on Sunday. Sunday. Beautiful weather if you have a Super Bowl party planned. Then as we head into next week, we keep it mild, but we work the clouds back in, a few showers possible. The main event is Wednesday. We have a cold front on the way for the middle part of next week. Behind it, very cold air. So we're going to see a snap back to winter conditions. And we're expecting some winter weather, snow and sleet in North Texas. But to get that here in Southeast Texas, you need the rain and the cold air to meet at the same time. Doesn't look to be in the cards this time. We'll continue to watch it, but right now the rain moves through. It is out of here before the cold air arrives. So that cold air comes in with dry conditions, but it'll definitely make its mark. Take a look at this 10 day forecast. We're at low 70s on Sunday. You know, pushing possibly 80 degrees by Tuesday. And then behind that cold front, we're right back down to the 50s for our afternoon highs and overnight lows in the 30s. Eric, over to you. Yeah, I guess that is kind of weather whiplash. Britta, thank you very much for that. Southwest Freeway, Abyss and Ab, we've got our second accident in the morning. This may have happened uh, due to the backup from an earlier accident just downstream. Maybe a quick fender bender, uh, rear end collision here, but it is backing things up on the Southwest Freeway. Be aware of that. We go back to the Beltway, and you can see the backup isn't very far at the Beltway, we're still moving along pretty well. So as far as time goes, it's still about 30 minutes in from the Sugarland area. It's about a five minute delay because of this particular accident. And you can see it right here on the map. It is just past the Beltway if you are coming in from the southwest side of town, the Sugarland area. Bigger picture, things fairly quiet out there. We do have a little bit of a delay on the North Loop approaching 45. Looks like uh, there may have been a little accident on the exit ramp getting onto 45 northbound. But overall, we're still moving along at least slowly on this stretch of the North Loop, or uh, yeah, the North Loop. Katy Freeway at Blaylock moving along nicely. This is what most of our area roads look like. Our inbound drive times in the green in most areas. Sugarland again, uh, the biggest delay there at five minutes, 30 minute ride in from Sugarland. And a quick reminder, we have the closure at the interchange between the West Loop and the Southwest Freeway this weekend. Total closure. My advice, avoid this interchange entirely. If you can't, bring along a lot of easy listening music to kind kind of dampen any kind of road rage you may be feeling because of this right here. Fair warning. Back Down, to you. Download that Kenny G on your... <laughs> Seriously. Whatever, whatever exactly. it is you want to do. Maybe, Michael Bolton. Maybe a nice podcast. Keep you busy. Well, more and more airlines are continuing to cut flights to China amid the coronavirus crisis there. One uh, American airline could be next if employees get their way. Channel 2's Maribel Aver with us this Friday. Well, the pilots of a major U.S. airline are suing to try and stop service to China. I'll have the details. That's head live from the Nasdaq market site in Times Square. Good morning. The U.K. is leaving the European Union today after 47 years. Newspaper headlines reflected the divided mood of the nation, with the Daily Mail calling it a new dawn for Britain, while the Guardian's headline was Small Island. 
reflecting on the UK's status in the world. Now, not much is going to change as the UK begins an 11-month transition period. Well, was the last Southwest Airlines flight you took safe? Investigators say they're not sure. Plus, American Airlines employees are taking a stand, saying they don't want to fly to China. Let's check in with Maribel this Friday morning, live at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. Good morning. Good morning, Owen. Pilots at American Airlines are suing the carrier to try and stop flights between the U.S. and China. The pilots union wants to put a stop to American service due to the coronavirus. The lawsuit cites, quote, serious and in many ways still unknown health threats from the outbreak. The union has been asked or has asked a Dallas court for a temporary and immediate restraining order to halt the flights. Southwest Airlines flew millions of passengers on jets that had unconfirmed maintenance records. That's according to the Wall Street Journal, which reviewed a report from the transportation department on the issue. More than 17 million passengers flew on the Southwest planes in question over a roughly two-year period. The report says Southwest failed to prioritize safety and it also criticizes the FAA saying its oversight of the airlines was lax. As latest in biz, have a great weekend. Owen and Sia, I hope you guys don't have Super Bowl fever Monday. I know. Not a chance. No, we got, that, we we'll got the see. vaccine. We, well, okay, I got my vaccine. I did. I'll be here Monday. I just got a B12 shot yesterday, so <laughs> I'll be go. here. I'm good. Yeah, likely story. <laughs> All right, Maribel, have a good weekend. All right, thank you, Maribel. One of the hottest names in Houston sports smoked out while visiting Jimmy Fallon. Coming up, JJ and Jimmy take the hot ones challenge Ooh. how it went and when they finally got to the end <laughs> good morning everyone i'm health reporter Haley hernandez the latest on the coronavirus and what local doctors are doing to develop a vaccine for it details are coming up all right, time to for traffic. Good news for you, Southwester, or Southwest Siders. Uh, coming in from Sugarland, you're in decent shape because the accident we had right here at Bissonette, it has cleared, and that is good news. We'll take a look at your inbound drive times from pretty much everywhere around town. It's coming up at the bottom of the hour. That's some good news on a Friday. Well, we might be waking up to cloudy skies right now. Temperatures close to 50 degrees, but who's ready for a sunshine takeover? We'll take a look at that weekend forecast coming up. Message. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Developing this morning, coronavirus concerns are growing as the crisis continues to spread. What's being done in Houston to ease concerns? And breaking out of Houston's south side, a police chase with one of their own cruisers, but it wasn't an officer behind the wheel. How a man in handcuffs got control of that vehicle. Cold start this Friday morning. Don't get used to it, though. Britta's got a beautiful <laughs> weekend ahead. Hey, if you're getting ready to do your taxes, there is one credit you need to remember. If you don't claim it, you could be passing up hundreds, even thousands of dollars in tax breaks. We're going to tell you what you need to know. All right, Amy, thank you. Yes, good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Tania Wright. I'm Owen Plenty. Eric Bray, good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning, Kamiko, going well out there. Weather's nice. So, so far, so good on this Friday. Happy Friday, by the way. Yeah, yeah this Happy weekend's Friday. looking fabulous. We're going to have sunshine. That's going to be nice after a few cloudy days. This morning, it's still cloudy, but do not forget your sunglasses because we'll have breaks of sunshine for the evening commute, at least the first half. Let's take a live look outside. Pretty cloudy over downtown right now. We have temperatures at 50 degrees. We're tracking some rain on exact track radar, but great news. It is staying to the south of us, just like what we have been anticipating. So we're calling for dry conditions today. Uh, we are going to see at least breaks of sunshine in the cloud deck later today. Best chance of that is going to be farther out to the west. Right now to the west, we're at 47 degrees in Katy, 48 degrees in Liberty County. Right now at Bush Airport. We're at 50. We're going to keep it rather cool today, but pretty close to 60 degrees. If you have plans for tonight, have a sweater with you. We're going to be in the 50s. We'll talk about a warm up and sunshine in your weekend forecast next. Eric. All right. Very good. Thank you very much, Britta. We've got, uh, well, an accident that we're dealing with. This is uh, not on the 59 freeway. This is the Welsh Beltway 8 at Westview. So that accident is on the shoulder. It's not affecting any main lanes. Here's our main map. You can see a little bit of orange starting to pick up on some of our area roadways. Usual suspects where traffic is getting a little bit sluggish. But again, this West Beltway 8 at Westview accident is not affecting. Well, well, it does look like it's actually affecting a right lane, even though it was reported only to be a shoulder incident. The backup associated with this, not too big at this point in time. It is on the northbound side of things. Gulf Freeway at Howard is looking much better. A little slow coming inbound, but overall your drive times are still pretty reasonable for this time in the morning. Still in the green from Green Lake, or from Clear Lake into downtown. 26 minutes, 16 minute ride in Pearland. That's about a five minute delay. Back to you.
Eric Ray, thank you to Breaking News. We brought you the top of the newscast, a live look off of Sunnyside and Nordling on the north side, where police say a woman is dead after crashing during a police chase. It's unclear why the chase was happening, but at one point the woman crashed into a pole and then she died at the hospital. More breaking news from Pasadena. A police car crashes during a chase. Police were pursuing one of their own vehicles, but it wasn't an officer behind the wheel. No, it wasn't. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli is live this morning with how this whole thing started and how it ended. Vincent, good morning. Tonight, good morning. Police say a handcuffed suspect stole a police cruiser. There was a high-speed chase and a crash. Now the suspect back in cuffs. This wild story begins with a traffic stop near 225 and Shaver Street. Officer was able to determine that the vehicle was stolen. Then the veteran Pasadena police officer arrested the driver. That individual was placed, handcuffed and placed in the back of the patrol car. And officers began searching the stolen vehicle for evidence. During the investigation, that individual was able to um, get out of his handcuffs, go to the front of the patrol car, steal that patrol car, and a chase ensued. Then the suspect crashed the police cruiser in this grassy field near 288 and Holmes Road. He then fled uh, the area. Officers conducted a search. With the assistance of HPD uh, air support, they were able to, to apprehend the suspect, and he is now in custody. There will also be an internal investigation to determine how the suspect stole the police cruiser. Make sure we looked at video cameras, um, several video cameras that, that are present, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. We'll conduct the investigation as we normally. Authorities say that no one was injured during the chase. Now the suspect will be charged with evading arrest and driving a stolen vehicle. Reporting live in Houston, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. 634, new this morning, close to 100 gambling machines were discovered overnight in an illegal game room bus to north, uh, northeast Harris County. Precinct 1 deputies responded to the call at Ticonderoga Lane uh, Road, that is, near Van Hut Lane. Deputies plan to give us some more information about it later today. Now to a major traffic alert that Eric and Sophia have been telling us about all morning long. The West Loop going to be shut down in both directions at the Southwest Freeway. Construction starts at 9 p.m. tonight, and this is going to last until Monday at 5 a.m. And that's not the worst part. These closures are going to continue every weekend until February 24th. Crews are using this time to hang bridge beams to widen the connector ramps there. We've got the detours on our website. Click to Houston.com to find them. Look under the traffic tab. And the community workshop continuing today with a focus on a controversial plan to expand a vital part of I-45. But not everyone's on board with the plan. Critics of the project say they fear too many homes, businesses, jobs, historic sites, and even green space would be lost. Not to mention the impact a wider freeway would have on air pollution and the increased potential for flooding. A decision on the design of Segment 3 is expected this summer. It would cost $7 billion. A contractor who collected deposits for home repair projects and then never did the work is behind bars this morning. Investigators now are looking for more victims to come forward. 71-year-old William Harrington was arrested and charged Wednesday with aggregate theft. Investigators with Harris County Precinct 1 say he's also believed to have targeted several others in the Greater Heights neighborhood and surrounding areas between July and December 2019. Harrington's accused of taking upfront money to cover the cost of supplies, uh, to do repair jobs, and then never actually doing the work. Today we'll be in court where the teenage suspect accused of killing a Bel Air High School student earlier this month is set to face a judge. The hearing is set for 8.30 this morning. 19-year-old Cesar Cortez was killed in the uh, JR, uh, the Junior ROTC building. Uh, today's hearing comes after the gun police say was used to kill Cortez was found. The district attorney says the suspect told them where to find it. President Trump's impeachment trial could be all wrapped up today. Lawmakers will debate and when and then they'll vote on whether to call additional witnesses. If that vote fails, they could vote by the end of today to acquit President Trump. Democrats say they can finish up with new witnesses in about a week and says Republicans don't want the public to hear the truth. We know why they don't want John Bolton to testify. They just don't want the American people to hear it in all of its ugly graphic detail. The White House wants this done before the president's State of the Union address, which is next Tuesday. Today starts with two hours of closing arguments for each side before that critical vote.
The coronavirus is now a global health emergency. We know at least 213 people have died with more than 9,600 cases. That is in China alone. In Houston, no one's been infected, but there are still concerns about it. And health reporter Haley Hernandez is here with the latest information. Good morning, guys. So concerns about the coronavirus have been popping up since the spread began, and so have rumors, which local health agencies have worked hard to stamp out. At 10 a.m., Congressman Al Green will be at the Jusco supermarket in Chinatown, where rumors spread earlier this week about a case of coronavirus there. That is incorrect, though. Green will be addressing the situation, then plans to visit with businesses who were impacted by those lies that were spread online. We spoke with the manager at one of the stores on Bel Air who said he'd seen a drop in customers since rumors began swirling. Now, there are at least six confirmed cases in the U.S., but none in Texas. The latest, the CDC he says is a man uh, from Chicago who was infected by his wife after she returned from Wuhan, China. That is the first person to person case we know of in this country. So how long is it going to take to develop a vaccine for coronavirus? There are several groups working on one right now, including the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston. This week, UTMB told me their drug shows preclinical efficacy in mice. According to Galveston researchers, the drug has the ability to stimulate the immune system in the lungs to protect against a wide range of pathogens. So obviously, the idea would be to hurry up that research and get medicine to the outbreak. However, some experts warn that the expedited timeline doesn't always allow for careful evaluation of the safety and effectiveness of the vaccines. So it's always one of those things, you know, you want to make sure it's safe before you give it to humans. Exactly. But at the same time, there's a lot of urgency behind this. There really is, because mm -hmm. it continues to spread in China it just keeps that's right and it's tenfold. affecting travel so yep. thank you Haley thank you Haley for that all right well if you didn't know we're just two days away from Super Bowl Sunday even though our guys are not going to be playing in the big game the fans are still talking about the Texans uh, we're gonna hear from Ari Alexander who caught up with DeAndre Hopkins before the big game hey fears of the coronavirus may save people in the market for a new home I'm serious I'm consumer expert Amy Davis with what analysts say the deadly virus is doing to mortgage rates. Good morning, Texans superstar J.J. Watt made a stop on The Tonight Show while he was in New York this week. And during the show, he got to chow down on some wings with Jimmy Fallon. But this was not your normal lunch date. This was a scene from Hot Ones, a wildly popular YouTube show where celebrities eat really spicy wings and answer questions. And uh, we think the wings may have won. We have reached the end of the gauntlet, approaching the finish line. And Jimmy, it's become a tradition here on The Tonight Show for us to play a little game. And there is so much. All right, what's the rules? No, I'm done. The game. So much anticipation for this weekend's Super Bowl and, of course, the halftime performance with J-Lo and Shakira. So with your brain on fire, hung ablaze, mouth in inferno, can you try to do an impression? I don't want to play any games, Sean. <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure their stomachs felt great after that, too. Now, they did this before the interview and then went to the set to talk a bit. Oh my goodness, uh, that was a moment JJ just couldn't really wrap his head around. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would we do that? Why would we do idea. that? Why would we do that than this? I know, I just figured we'd go right into the interview. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? <laughs> how, are you, how are you feeling right now? It's just not awful. good, not good. Oh, we have bread. I'm good. We have bread, we have milk. I'm, uh... <sighs> Oh I'm gonna be okay. Goodness. I'm gonna be okay. I'm strong. I'm, I'm strong. Jerry from Cheer yesterday told me I'm strong. All right, good. Yeah. <laughs> My mom says I'm strong. Well, if you missed JJ last night, don't worry. You get a chance to see him again on TV when he hosts Saturday Night Live this weekend. Well, it's almost the end of the road for one of the last two. Well, for both teams, well, only one can win, though, right? Super Bowl 54 kicks off Sunday. Channel 2 Sports' Ari Alexander's in South Florida catching up with a Texan who's going to enjoy the big game with the fans. Good morning, guys. Always a party going on in South Beach. Celebrities are out right now. Rap group Migos was over here 50 feet away from us playing games, shooting baskets with Ric Flair, one of my favorite people in the world. But we caught up with one of the biggest Texans, DeAndre Hopkins, down here in Miami for the Super Bowl. But he's not too thrilled about not being the one that's going to be playing on Sunday. 
It's great to see all the people. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of uh, football, you know, so to see, uh, you know, the event and, and how they set up things, is pretty cool. The environment, just being around uh, the atmosphere, man, it's awesome. I hate watching, uh, you know, people play football when I, when I, when I can't play, so uh, especially a championship game like this. I asked DeAndre what he's doing so far this offseason. He says right now the focus is that he needs to get healthy, and then after that, he's going to start his offseason program. As for Miami, DeAndre wants to eat. He said he's here for the food, and he's here for the culture. Reporting from South Beach, Ari Alexander, KPRC, Channel 2 Sports. And stay for the party. Ari, thanks. 644, it's an emotional day for us here at Channel 2. Our longtime anchor, co-worker, and friend, Bill Baessa, who's retiring. Last night, we had a dinner in his honor at the Palm. Mayor Sylvester Turner was there speaking to the crowd, declaring today, Bill Baessa Day to celebrate the end of a long, distinguished career of serving the people of Houston. The restaurant itself honored Bill, too. They have a wall of famous faces, and he's got a little caricature there. Nice. His own caricature. Booth number eight, if you want to, when you, when you go to sit down, you request that booth, and you'll be right there with Bill. Uh, by the way, Memorial City is going to honor Bill by us. Oh, by the way, some giants uh, of television has showed up last night. Memorial City is going to honor Bill. They're going to light up more than two and a half miles of LED lights uh, in orange and white. So I guess that's uh, a Whataburger. I say for his Shout Whataburger. Out. Um, and they're going to do that at, at sunset. Uh, Bill's final newscast is tonight at 10 o'clock. It's amazing. Wow. Bill likes Whataburger? No. Uh, I've heard that once or twice. <laughs> I didn't know. I went, we were wondering if that was going to be our lunch today when we had us going away. Maybe lunch. it is, actually. I don't know. Yeah, I we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, so tune in tonight if you want to yeah. see uh, 10 history. 10 o'clock. Yeah. 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 And his first weekend of retirement, perfect. Just for you, Bill. So we're going to have sunshine, warm temperatures. Perfect for Bill to go out and take Brinkley on a walk. That's his pup. Uh, right now, it's a little cloudy, but we're going to see improvements today. In fact, we'll see breaks of sunshine as we go into the afternoon. We're at 50 degrees right now here in Houston, 48 degrees in Tomball, 53 degrees currently in Galveston. And to the north of town, we are cooling down to the upper 40s this morning in Conroe. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to keep it a little cool, about 60 degrees. Only breaks of sunshine expected. If you have plans after work, after school, we'll We'll quickly cool down to the 50s, so have a sweater with you. We are tracking some rain on radar, but it's farther down to the south, just what we anticipated. All this is lifting off to the north and east, so we get to enjoy a nice dry out. Weather's looking good heading into Saturday. Sunshine completely taking over, mid 60s expected. As our winds turn back on shore on Sunday, that south breeze will warm us up. We're expecting 70s to close out the weekend. Beautiful weather if you have an outdoor party planned for Super Bowl. Now, going to next week, we'll start it off dry, warm with temperatures in the 70s, but a few showers start to pop up on Tuesday. The main event is Wednesday. We have a cold front on the way, and behind this cold front, a lot of cold air. Look at this. We have winter weather, snow and sleet moving into North Texas. This is Wednesday of next week. If you're traveling to North Texas, keep an eye on this storm system. For us, it's going to be an all-rain event, and it looks like the rain moves out before the cold air arrives. So right now, we're not forecasting any sleet or snow for us, but you're going to notice a big temperature drop by behind that cold front. So it's a little bit of a roller coaster. We're expecting mid 60s for today, low 70s tomorrow. Then as we go into, or pardon me, on Sunday, then as we go into next week, we'll start pretty mild. I mean, we're pretty close to 80 degrees on Tuesday. And then we go right back down to the 50s with overnight lows in the 30s. Eric, over to you. All right, nice looking weekend coming up. Uh, time to have traffic now. Traffic is looking pretty good. Usual suspects, slow spots around town. We have one little unusual hookup here. This is the northbound portion of the West Belt. Way. Uh, we had an accident just north of I-10. It has cleared and traffic is beginning to line out very nicely right now. So maybe a little bit of a slowdown, but if you are in, say, the West Chase area, uh, heading up toward Memorial City, you're in good shape. Southwest Freeway, Lancashire, they're moving the cameras around a little bit. But we had a stalled vehicle on the right lane, slowing things down a little bit through that 610 interchange stretch. Could be minor delays because of that. And then finally up on the north side of town, North Freeway at Airline, we've got a stalled vehicle in the HOV lane. Traffic is getting by but you may have to tap on your brakes uh, before you get around that particular location. Overall, though, things looking pretty good. 19 minutes in from Pearland. It's about a 10-minute delay. And want to give you a final reminder this morning. We've got traffic uh, construction issues around town. We'll have all those on clicktohouston.com. But the main one is this closure, the West Loop at 59, the Southwest Freeway all weekend long beginning at 9 o'clock tonight. Avoid this interchange. That is the best advice I could possibly give you for this weekend in this particular location. Back to you guys.
All right, thank you, Eric. As you get ready to do your taxes, look into the Earn Income Tax Credit. And coronavirus is now impacting mortgage rates. Go figure. Amy Davis, our consumer expert, has consumer news. Yeah, I know this sounds like a stretch. That's what I thought. But the folks at Market Watch say fears of the virus have caused mortgage rates to plunge. They are the second lowest level in three years right now. So a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is about 3.51%. That's down almost a full point than it was a year ago. A 15-year year fixed rate mortgage sank to about 3%. Now, Market Watch attributes the decline in rates this week indirectly to the coronavirus that started in China because the fears of increased volatility in the market and rates, they say, could go lower. According to a survey by Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, 44% of people polled who make less than $40,000 a year didn't know they could qualify for the earned income tax credit. Those folks could be leaving hundreds or even thousands of dollars in tax breaks on the table. That tax credit can be used to pay down debt or you can put it away for a rainy day, but you have to file a tax return and claim the credit to receive it. 150 million people pay for Amazon's Prime membership. Wow. That's not Amazon customers. That number would be much higher. This is just the number of people who are Prime members. Mm. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos released that information in a quarterly earnings call yesterday. The number of Prime members is up 50% since the last time Amazon revealed those numbers in 2018. That's more than um, all the Netflix subscribers. And then as soon as that information went out, they say that their um, shares went up by like 10%. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, start doing the math on that. Yeah. 50 million. And a lot of other retailers got really worried. Right. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure they did. And they're the leader for a reason. He's been shaking it up for a while. Mm -hmm. 6.50 coming up. Final check of traffic and weather this Friday morning on Channel 2 News Today. Tech. Uh, breaking news into Channel 2 at 6.53 from El Campo. Police say uh, they found a body in a house fire and a woman called police to say she was shot. This all happened at Oliver and Taylor Street. According to police, 21-year-old Kadra Sparks called 911 saying she had been shot. When they got to the scene, they found the home on fire. Later, finding a body inside, family members believe it's 23-year-old Keishan Riggins. Right now, it's unclear who shot the woman and how the other person inside died. Some more breaking news this morning. A hearing is going to be held later today after last week's deadly explosion. Our Sophia Ojeda is in Spring Branch this morning with more on the emergency motion that was filed last night. Good morning, guys. The area that that motion that hearing this morning that is set for the area that they want to preserve is right behind me here. We are in a neighborhood across the bayou from Watson Manufacturing. You can see homes hit hard by that horrific explosion in the plant in the distance there. That hearing is set for 830 this morning. One of the attorneys in the case tells Channel 2 he filed an emergency motion late last night on behalf of more than 130 homeowners who were hurt or whose homes were damaged in that explosion. That motion is asking the city of Houston to not remove any evidence from the area around the Watson manufacturing plant. That includes the plant facilities and the 4500 to 4600 block of Stefani Lane. The attorney says the city is taking over the explosion site from the ATF at noon today. We will stay on top of this story. We'll be at that hearing, get some more information, bring it to you live on air and online at clicktohouston.com. Reporting live in Northwest Houston, Sophia Ojeda, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Sophia. Also breaking, you're looking live at the scene off Sunnyside in Nordling in North Houston. That's where police say a woman is dead after crashing right into a pole. Now, it's not clear why officers were chasing this person, but they say she crashed and died at the hospital. Breaking news uh, from the south side of town. A man's back in handcuffs after police say he stole a Pasadena police cruiser and then crashed in a field at 288 in Holmes. They're going to try to figure out what happened there. Eric Brait, good morning. Hey, good morning, Owen. Good morning to you. Happy Friday to you. This is the Interchange 59 and the West Loop. The West Loop is going to be closed all weekend long, so this interchange is going to be a nightmare. Avoid it beginning 9 p.m. tonight until 5 a.m. Monday. North Freeway stall on an HOV lane, but people are getting by. So not a huge problem there and 288 no accidents, but just your normal uh, volume delays coming in from the Pearland area. Here are your current drive times looking pretty good overall on a Friday morning. Britta. Not bad for a Friday and Eric, we have sunshine on the way. It's cloudy right now. Temperatures are cool at 50 degrees and we'll top off pretty close to 60 this afternoon. But as we go into Saturday and Sunday, sunshine is going to take over mid 60s on Saturday, low 70s on Sunday, a perfect Super Bowl weekend. Get outside and enjoy it. Go teams.
games. Uh, hey, it's Bill's last show yes. tonight at 10. We hope you get to tune in for that. Um, history right before our very eyes. Uh, it's also Hot Chocolate Day. So Ooh, nice. Get a little bit of that, too. It's chilly out. It'll be nice. Have a great weekend.